Over on Jabber Gatorade, a new college football video is out. In this one, we talk about the 1988 stumble between Alabama and Army and how a disastrous TV decision to play the game alongside an NFL playoff game resulted in horrible ratings. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. Outlier games can go one of two ways. On one hand, you have the outlier games that are such an extreme difference from what the player usually does, to the point where they accrue all of their career stats in that one game. I'm talking about games like what New England Patriots running back Jonas Gray did against the Indianapolis Colts in 2014, where he had 201 yards and 4 touchdowns, even though over every other game in his career, he had 387 yards and 1 touchdown. I'm talking about games like what Cleveland Browns running back Larry Mason did against the New England Patriots in 1987, where he had 133 yards and 2 rushing touchdowns in his debut, and had 268 yards and no rushing touchdowns in every other game in his career. You can learn more about that somewhat forgotten yet still surprising performance by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But on the other hand, you have the outlier games for all the wrong reasons where such an extreme difference happens to the point where a player accrues all of their negative stats in their career in that one game. As an example, suppose you had a quarterback who started every game and threw six interceptions in a season, but threw five of those six in one game. Suppose you have a defensive back who hadn't been called for pass interference all year, but was called three times in one game. And we have a classic example of that here with a man you've been watching this whole time. This is Miami Dolphins tight end Anthony Fasano, and in the 2009 season opener against the Atlanta Falcons, he had a game that was shockingly bad, to the point where when you look at his entire career, it makes no sense as to what transpired on that day at the Georgia Dome. Literally nothing about this game adds up, and more than a decade later, it's still as confusing of a performance as it was when it first happened, and deserves a deep dive to truly understand the weirdness of it all. This is the story behind Anthony Fasano and the most surprisingly bad game in the history of the Miami Dolphins. Before I talk about the actual game of the performance in question, we need some context to understand just who Anthony Fasano is, how well he was playing, and how instrumental he was to the success of the team. After spending his first two seasons with the Dallas Cowboys, the team that drafted the Notre Dame tight end in the second round of the 2006 NFL Draft, Fasano was shipped off to the Miami Dolphins during the 2008 offseason in exchange for a fourth-round pick. Bill Parcells, who was the head coach for the Cowboys when the team drafted him and was now in Miami's front office, really liked Fasano and wanted to bring him on, especially since he hadn't done a whole lot in Dallas over his first two seasons. The Dolphins were hoping that by acquiring Fasano, they could get a good, young starting tight end who could help bolster an offense that was just abysmal in 2007. And let's just say that there's a reason, or several hundred for that matter, as to why they went 1-15 that year. And in 2008, Anthony Fasano delivered. Somehow, the Dolphins made it to the playoffs, going from 1-15 to the AFC East crown, making this the last time, as of this video, that they've ever won the AFC East. If you told someone at the start of the season that the Dolphins, who had one win the year before, would win the division, and not the New England Patriots, the division winner in each of the past five seasons, and the team that literally went undefeated in the regular season, I think people would have looked at you like you had three heads. Yet, the Dolphins did that, and part of why they were so successful and pulled off one of the greatest single-season turnarounds of all time was because of the play of their tight end, Anthony Fasano. After not really fitting into the Dallas offense in his first two seasons, he started every game for Miami in 2008, and became one of the most reliable weapons that the team had in the passing game. By the time the 2008 season ended, Fasano had 34 receptions for 454 yards and 7 touchdowns. His 7 touchdowns was the most receiving touchdowns by any player on the team, and quite frankly, it wasn't even close. David Martin was the only other player on the team to have more than 2 receiving touchdowns, and he finished the year with 3, meaning that Fasano had more than double the number of touchdowns that second place on the team had. In the post-Wildcat era, so from week 3 on, including the playoffs, it was clear that getting the ball to Fasano was one of the keys to success. When Fasano had more than 25 receiving yards in a game in that post-Wildcat era, the Dolphins were 6-0, including that famous Wildcat game against the New England Patriots in Week 3 that got the ball rolling, where he had three receptions for 66 yards and a touchdown. When Fasano did not cross this benchmark, the team was only 5-4. and four. 
he made some absolutely critical touchdown catches and third down catches, and had relatively surefire hands, making him one of the better tight ends in football during that 2008 season. Seriously, in 2008, only two tight ends in football had more receiving touchdowns than Fasano did. One of them was Tony Gonzalez, who had 10. The other was Antonio Gates, who had 8. Both Gonzalez and Gates were in the primes of their careers, with Gonzalez making it into the Hall of Fame, and Gates well on his way once he becomes eligible. And those were the only two tight ends that Fasano was behind that season in that category. He was that good, and anytime you're in company with Tony Gonzalez and Antonio Gates, you're doing something right. And yes, he made some good catches, was incredibly reliable, and could be counted on when the Dolphins got down by the goal line and got into the red zone. But one of the great elements to Fasano's game was his ability to hold on to the ball. Some players are completely careless when the ball is in their hands, and they lack the necessary ball security skills to truly thrive. Anthony Fasano was the exact opposite of that. He touched the ball 34 times in 2008, and recorded zero fumbles. In 2007 with the Dallas Cowboys, he touched the ball 14 times, also recording zero fumbles. And in 2006, which was his rookie season with the Cowboys, he touched the ball 14 times, also recording zero fumbles. Through the first three seasons of his NFL career, Fasano, despite receiving a pretty good workload for a tight end, had yet to cough up the football. You're going to ride the pine very quickly if you make a habit out of fumbling the ball away. And Fasano was just about the prime example for good ball security, which is what's about to make the game you're about to watch all the more shocking. Because on this day in 2009, it was almost as though we were watching the NFL equivalent of the Space Jam scene, where the NBA players get all the talent sucked out of them and can't hold on to a basketball anymore. Because what Anthony Fasano did on this day was that bad. September 13th, 2009. It's week one of a brand new NFL season, and we have an interconference matchup on our hands between the Atlanta Falcons and the Miami Dolphins. Obviously, this is a big game for both teams, as it's opening day, and you always want to start the season off on the right foot. And both the Falcons and Dolphins enter this game under extremely similar circumstances. Both teams had disastrous 2007 seasons where they fired their head coach, before shocking everyone by bouncing back in 2008 to make the playoffs, before losing to burn name teams in the wildcard round. And for Anthony Fasano, this was a big game for him after that amazing 2008 campaign of his, because he wanted to pick up right where he left off, especially after David Martin, the other key tight end on the team, was placed on injured reserve. Fasano knew that in his absence, he needed to step up in every way, and said as much, talking about the importance of the younger guys moving up on the depth chart and his increased role in the team. Well, on this day, Fasano did not step up. He did the exact opposite of stepping up, which I guess in this case is stepping down. After not having a catch in the first quarter, Fasano finds himself in an offense struggling to get anything going, with their first three drives ending in a fumble off a Chad Pennington getting strip sacked, a punt, and another punt. Eventually, the Falcons take a 7-0 lead after Matt Ryan throws a one-yard touchdown pass midway through the second quarter to open up the scoring. And the Dolphins know that getting momentum heading into halftime would be huge, especially since it had been since Week 2 in 2008 against the Arizona Cardinals, since the last time they were shut out in the first half of a game. And fortunately for the Dolphins, for what feels like the first time today, they're actually going on a drive. Chad Pennington hits Greg Camarillo on a gain of 15 for a first down, with a successful challenge being used to overturn the original ruling of an incomplete pass. As a side note, this is one of the craziest catches I've seen that doesn't get talked about or remembered today. I mean... I have no clue how he caught this pass. Anyways, after another completion, for the first time all day, the Dolphins are in the red zone, and are in prime position to eliminate the goose egg from their score, and maybe even tie the game if they can finish the drive off on a strong note. Instead, when Chad Pennington passes to Anthony Fasano, after Fasano catches the ball, he fumbles. And not only does he fumble thanks to a tackle by Mike Peterson, but it's returned 53 yards the other way by Brian Williams. Talk about a giant momentum shift. From the Dolphins being in prime position to tie the game, to the Falcons being in prime position to take a two-possession lead, all within the span of one play. It's the beauty and yet the agony of football. And this fumble, which came at an absolutely horrible time, not that there's ever a good time to fumble, was the first fumble of Anthony Fasano's career. And for three seasons of being a model example of how to secure the ball, he finally coughed it up. But okay... 
everyone fumbles at some point. The streak was bound to end, and one fumble by itself doesn't make this the most surprisingly bad game in Dolphins history. But what if he fumbled again? What if he fumbled two times in one game? Well, in the third quarter, the game seemed to be starting to get out of reach for Miami, who had still yet to score a point. After Matt Ryan threw a 20-yard touchdown pass to Tony Gonzalez to make it 16-0, even though it was still only a two-possession game, which meant that this comeback late in the third was feasible, although technically, as long as you're within four possessions of the Falcons heading into the fourth quarter, you've still got a chance, the Dolphins knew that time was running out. If they were going to pull this off and have any chance at starting their season 1-0 and on the right foot, they needed a spark right here, and right now. The good news was that they got their spark on the very first play of the drive when Ronnie Brown carried it for 14 yards. The bad news? They lost it on the very next play. Because after Chad Pennington hit Anthony Fasano, he was tackled by Curtis Lofton. And on the tackle, sure enough, he lost the football again. Jonathan Babineau recovered for the Falcons on a play that truly summed up how sloppy Miami played. And that was all she wrote, as the Falcons wound up winning the game by a final score of 19-7. Anthony Fasano's final stat line was nothing short of abysmal, and was a far cry from his 2008 season. It was a day to forget for the Notre Dame tight end, who touched the ball twice and fumbled the ball twice, resulting in two turnovers. Literally every time Fasano touched the ball on this day, he gave it back to the other team, which is definitely not an ideal strategy for winning football games at any level, let alone the NFL. And after the game, most of the talk in the post-game press conference was about just how poor of a job the Dolphins did at holding onto the football. And in particular, Anthony Fasano and his struggles. Head coach Tony Sperano was incredibly blunt in his assessment, saying on the performance, we have to take care of the football. I mean, that's our job. You're the ball carrier in this offense, you're going to take care of the football. Period. And Fasano was highly critical of himself, and understandably so. As he said, I didn't have the ball secured. There are no excuses for it. I just have to concentrate better and hold on to the ball. It's something our team depends on, and that's not turning over the ball. Fasano then added that he was looking forward to putting this game behind him, saying, when you put a performance out there like that, you can't wait for the next game to get here. But here's the part that truly makes this entire situation crazy. Sure, not fumbling at all in three years, and then fumbling twice in one game is bizarre. But it's not quite as bizarre if you develop a fumbling problem later on, or at least cough it up from time to time. But Anthony Fasano never lost a fumble again. Seriously. Fasano went on to have an incredibly successful NFL career. He played with Miami until 2012, then played two seasons with the Kansas City Chiefs, then played two seasons with the Tennessee Titans, and played his final season in 2017 with the Miami Dolphins once again. By the time his career ended, Fasano had 299 receptions for 3,278 yards, and 36 touchdowns. Anytime a player can play 12 seasons in the NFL and find the end zone 36 times while playing in 180 games and starting 136 of them, that's unbelievably impressive. And we've already established that from 2006 to 2008, Fasano never fumbled the football. Do you want to know how many times Fasano fumbled the ball from week two of the 2009 season through the end of his career at the end of the 2017 season? He fumbled once. What you're watching right here is a game that took place in Week 7 of the 2017 season against the New York Jets, where Fasano caught a pass and fumbled out of bounds. In his entire NFL career, that was the only other fumble he had. In every other game, he was a model for holding onto the ball. And remember, that fumble against the Jets went out of bounds, so the Dolphins retained possession, meaning that if we take out that game against the Falcons, over his 12-year career, Fasano lost zero fumbles. Excluding the Falcons game, the man played in 179 games, and over those 179 games, fumbled once and lost nothing. He had the only lost fumbles of his career against the Falcons, and had more fumbles in general in that one game against the Falcons than he did in the other 179 games of his career combined. If you truly want to talk about an outlier, there you go because it's tough to get any crazier than that. And when you put it in that context, this performance is truly shocking. Everybody has a bad and uncharacteristic day at the office, and no one knows that feeling more than Anthony Fasano, who had to be absolutely bewildered as to how that Falcons game played out the way that it did. 
The other 179 games made up 99.44% of his career. Yet all of his lowlights from a ball security standpoint are confined to that small minuscule slice of the pie at 0.56%. Fasano had an incredibly solid career that most tight ends would kill to have. And he did a lot of great things and caught a lot of amazing touchdowns in his over decade long stint in the NFL. Yet he might be best remembered for the one game that didn't show what his career and what his traits were like at all. If your first memory of Fasano is any one of the other 179 games, it's likely that you have a positive memory of the guy who was a solid tight end and could hold on to the ball. But if your first memory of Fasano is the Falcons game, you likely have a negative memory of a guy that, at least on this day, for the first and only time in his career, could not hold on to a football if his life depended on it. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gator 9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.